and welcome to another episode of War. In today's video, I want to give a brief introduction of what is cloud computing and AWS. If you're interested in watching more videos about serverless, cloud computing, and other software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday, so let's get started. <laughs> I know this video is pretty basic compared to all the videos I did in the past, but a lot of you has been asking me this kind of getting started question, so I thought like why not to start a series collecting some of the videos I already have in my list and putting some new videos on Cloud 101 or Serverless 101 so people that are coming fresh new to this channel can start this series and the first thing I want to tackle is cloud computing and AWS what it is and then I will start going into serverless a lot of those videos already exist so I will link them just in a series for you to watch so you can find the playlist I will link it on the top so you can continue watching so this video is about what is cloud computing and what is AWS to understand what cloud computing is we need to go and see some history so let's go to it in the past, all the companies were owning their data centers. Companies have their computing power in their basements and they own the computer power, the machines. So if they need to scale their systems, they need to buy more computers or bigger ones. With time, virtualization came in place and companies start to use it to share the computing resources between different products and later between different companies. Sometime later, specific companies started selling hosting services for these companies that they were producing products. They were offering computing power and storage capability. They were offering that these resources were shared between different companies and those companies were not the owners of these resources. So if the company needed more computing power, they just need to ask for more computing from their provider and it will just scale up. This was the birth of the cloud providers. Those companies that they were providing computing power and storage solutions were the first public cloud. Nowadays, cloud providers not only provide basic infrastructure, but all kinds of services and software on top of that infrastructure. So what is cloud computing? It's the use of computing resources, hardware and software that are delivered as a service over the internet or a network. You don't need to have it in your own premises. What are the characteristics of a cloud provider? It's reliable. You don't need to maintain the infrastructure. It's cost effective. You pay for as much as you use. It's scalable. You can scale it up and down and it takes advantage of the economics of scale. Cloud providers provide lots of different services, not only hardware, services that can be integrated into your applications or can be used as end applications. AWS, Amazon Web Services, is a cloud provider. AWS provides massive global infrastructure that allows companies to innovate experiment and iterate. Some of the characteristics of AWS are it's on demand, you use it when you need it, it's uniform because of the economic of scales of AWS, customers can leverage the cost effectiveness, scalability and flexibility of running AWS infrastructure, you pay as you go, no pay in advance, there is no contract, it's available, AWS is available by the console, the SDK, command line and API. Let's talk about AWS services in a little bit more detail. AWS provides infrastructure. We are going to talk a little bit more about this in a moment, but these are the regions available to zones and edge locations. Also, it provides what it's called foundation services, that is computing like EC2s and Lambdas. EC2s are the virtual machines from AWS and Lambdas are the functions of service. It provides some networking capabilities like VPCs, that is a private network that you can build inside AWS, and CloudFrom, that is the content delivery network from AWS. It provides a storage service like S3, that is a place where you can store files and they have others different as well. And also admin capabilities and security like your I am, that is where you create your users, your security roles and your policies, and CloudWatch, that is a place that it has the unified way that you can check logs and monitor dif different services from your AWS. These are the basic services that you can use directly or that the platform will be using. And then on top of that, we have the platform services. The platform services are managed services by AWS that you can use in your application directly or as a standalone service. For example, we have DynamoDB, that is the non-SQL database from uh, AWS. Then we have Kinesis, 
that is stream service for stream events, Cognito that is the authentication and authorization managed service from AWS, CloudFormation that is the service that you can use to build and manage your infrastructure as code, API Gateway that is a service you can use to manage your REST endpoints. And there is so many of these. There is like, I can feel many pages of platform services. And I think that's where AWS is growing and growing and growing nowadays. These are just some examples. Let's go back to the infrastructure and talk a little bit uh, about the global infrastructure of AWS. That is, I think, one very important characteristic. AWS has infrastructure all around the world. There are 18 data centers globally nowadays. These are core regions. By being globally distributed, it's possible to achieve lower latency and higher throughput. Also, AWS has a lot of CDNs, content distribution networks. These help to reduce the cost of transfer data, latency, and performance to end users. So let's go back to what is a region. A region is where the data center is. Each region has at least two data centers. In AWS terms, they are called availability zones. This is done to provide redundancy in case of something happens. So if there is one, I don't know, explosion or something goes like out of electricity or flood or something happens, that's why you need two or more. These availability zones are connected with high speed internet, but they are isolated from each other. So they use different network companies and different parts of the city. From outside, this availability zone seems like one data center. So in few cases, you will know in which availability zone your service is being hosted. AWS services run in these regions. Most of the AWS services are region specific. So when you create a new service, it's good to pick a region that is close to your customers. So let's put everything into an example app. Imagine you're building your own Twitter like service. The first thing you want to do is to pick a region for all the available regions. You choose Ireland as this. most of your customers will be in Europe. Then you create the web page and place all the statics files in S3 buckets. Then we use CrossFront as the content distribution network so the files will reach your customers faster. For managing your backend, you choose API Gateway for your endpoints and AWS Lambda for your computing. You also need a database to keep track of users, tweets, and other information of your application. So for that you use DynamoDB. You send users. You need some way to authenticate your users to your system, so for that you use Cognito. Cognito will give you users temporary IAM permissions into your AWS account to perform different actions. All infrastructure is created as code and is built and deployed using CloudFormation. And you can check the logs of your application with CloudWatch. This is a serverless application. There are no servers and the system scales up as you need and you also pay as you go. To get started with serverless applications, you should go and watch the next video on this series. I leave you the link on the description box and in the card. This was the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. If you want to continue learning about cloud, serverless, or whatever, I'll link you the next video in the description box of this playlist. And also you can find it for sure on the top what it says up next, because this is a series and you want to know more about serverless for sure. So go ahead and click there. And around here, there are other videos from my channel that you might be interested in watching and the next video as well. So I hope to see you in the next episode of Fubar. Ciao, ciao!